Let's welcome in our guest, attorney at law, Danny Staggers. Danny, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks so much for asking. <laughs> good. If I can start out just with a general West Virginia story, because we, we are such a unique state. And, you know, I like to see it. And in, in down in Greenbrier County, there's a story about the Greenbrier ghost. And what happened in the 1800s, this uh, fellow from Pocahontas County, he had been married twice before. Ladies disappear, you know, no answer to it. He comes down to Greenbrier County. He marries a young lady. She dies. This guy stays right next to the body, gets a local physician to say that she died of natural causes. When they bury her, that night, the daughter comes to visit her mom as a ghost and says, Mom, I did not die of natural causes. Comes like three or four times. The mom goes to the prosecuting attorney and says, I want the body exhumed. And sure enough, when they exhumed the body, she did die of a broken neck. And then what happened is that it's a trial. There's a trial down there. And uh, the prosecutor puts the mother on the stand. She tells this story. And it's the only case in the United States where somebody's con been convicted upon the testimony of a ghost. The, the defense counsel did not object because he thought it was so far-fetched. <laughs> and he served time in Moundsville and then died. He died in Moundsville. But when you get to Greenbrier County, it's a big deal down there. So there's so many unique stories in West Virginia. That is just great, you know, just to, for people to get out. And if you get down there, stay at the schoolhouse hotel. They have heated toilet seats <laughs> <laughs> and a heated bathroom. So, I don't want to uh, ask you how you found that out, by the way. Um, now, now, is this in Lewisburg? It's in White Sulphur Springs. White Sulphur, okay. Yes. Yeah, it, it's it's great area. I mean, West Virginia has so many neat things. Now, did the guy who died in prison then come back and tell someone to investigate his death in prison because it wasn't <laughs> the way they wrote that up? I don't know. I guess he was such a uh, you know bad person, nobody really stood up for him. Nobody cared. <laughs> nobody cared. <laughs> so, so let me get to my topic. And, and what I do is, is I do... You know, protecting assets for people as they get older, protecting assets for people that go into a nursing home. I do special needs trusts for uh, children and adults that are disabled and continue their public benefits. And I do estate planning. But the one thing I wanted to talk about this morning, and, and there's several points, is a lot of times, and I, I see this more, that's why I wanted to bring it up, is you're in the hospital. A caseworker may come by and say, you know, mom or dad has to go to the nursing home. And they'll say, you need to spend all your assets down to below $2,000, sell the house, and then once you get your assets below 2000 you qualify for Medicaid assistance. And that is so far from the truth. That's not true? It's not true. Because you hear everybody talking about doing that. I know. I know, Rob, and that's the point. And, and that's what I do is let's just take the house. Let's start out with the house is you can do what is called a transfer on death deed. And, John, you may have been in the legislature at that time. Mike, you were just thinking about it. But uh, the transfer on death deed is this, is mom, let's just say mom and dad goes to the nursing home because we men are the weaker sex. Let's just admit that. So dad's in the nursing home. Mom's thinking about, uh, you know, the home is going to be exempt. They tell you that, but it's not. Because after dad passes, mom passes, then the estate recovery comes in and says, sell the house to pay for dad's stay. But in the legislature back in 2014 was, I don't know, was that during, could that have been, but anyway. I was not in then. Okay. But anyway, yeah. the point is, it you convey it to the children, but it's revocable, so you really haven't given them anything. Therefore, there's no five-year look back. But when the parents pass, it rolls outside the estate directly to the children. And in West Virginia, we have a unique situation where creditors cannot go after anything that goes outside the estate. I've just protected the house. Even if the person's in the nursing home, I can do that. Jenny, what's a five-year look back? Good question. I get this so much, I just I just roll this stuff out. That's okay. What's what we're here for, baby? I knew, Rob. I knew you are there to protect me. <laughs> The five uh -oh. look back is, is if anybody gives a gift, like parents many times will say, I've got to get rid of my assets so that it's, it's not in my, my estate account. Uh, but 
you know, Congress came along in, in 2006 and said, no, you can't give away everything just to qualify for Medicaid assistance. And so um, they have this five-year look back that you can't give gifts during that five-year period. But you're not giving a gift in this situation because it's revocable. And if the child gets nasty, you can change, <laughs> take that child out and put somebody else in. So it's not set in stone. We've, we've protected, you know, probably your most valuable asset just with that one little step. So rather than giving it, you're sort of lending it. Is that right? <laughs> well, you, you are and you're not. Because okay. like I said, uh, John, is this, is you've, you're, it, it's, it's in, on paper that when I die, that's where it's going. So okay. you really haven't given them anything. That's right. why the five-year look back is not applicable. It, so you're saying you will get this eventually. Exactly. It's, it's Got it. yourself. It, as long as you don't misbehave. That's exactly right. Got it. Okay. And you know how many people come back and revoke that transfer on debt really? date and put somebody else in? You know, <laughs> if mom or dad said, uh, son, we'll give you this, this house, you behave yourself, I'd have been an angel. <laughs> you know, because that's a valuable asset. Sure. And, and, and then let's go one step further. And, but again, what I want to point out that first step is don't, I mean, yeah, you're listening to somebody in the hospital. They're, they're authoritative figures. You want to listen to them. But please step outside the box. Talk to an elder law attorney that can give you advice on how to protect the assets. And, and at what age should you start looking at doing something like that? You know, Mike, what I would do, and... I would say 21, just to start getting things really? in place. Let me give you an example. The second thing is, and, and Rob will know, I always advocate powers of attorney. Most people will come in and they'll say, oh, I want a will. The will is not for you because you're going. The power of attorney is there for you. For example, if you were to get sick and you're in the hospital and we can protect your assets through a good power of attorney. And here's the point is... Um, you're sitting in the hospital, you've got $100,000 in liquid assets. I don't know if you're married, you're single, but let's just say you're married. So what happens then is with the power of attorney, I take your assets, move them over to your wife. I just protected 100% of your assets. If you're single, the same thing. You've got to have a good power of attorney. I'll go through the qualifications just a second. I can move that $100,000 out of your account and, uh, and, and get it below $2,000, I've got you qualified. So I protected the house, I protected liquid assets. And, and when I mean a good power of attorney, so many, and again, I don't mean to disparage anybody, but the point being is with the power of attorney, you want uh, what is called a gifting paragraph. What that means is you're authorizing your attorney, in fact, or power of attorney to be able to transfer your assets out of your name, maybe into your loved one's name. You know, and, and because two things. Number one, if you don't have that paragraph in there, the law says it looks like you're stealing, and they're <coughs> going to say, no, can't do that. So that's why you have to put that paragraph in. Second thing about it is many attorneys will put in there that you can only give up to the gifting amount, which is $17,000 per year without filing anything with the IRS. And so uh, you, want, you don't want to put any limitations on the amount of money. Because most people are going to have more than seventeen thousand, and and so that power of attorney, we want that in there. We want the uh, waiver of privacy, because um, many times you go to the bank and you say, "Well, I need to find out what dad or mom has in their account." No, they didn't waive their privacy rights. You know that's particularly sensitive today. Um, I also put the medical power of attorney, my power of attorney. I don't like information floating out there. You know all these different documents. Third thing I do, Mike, is I record it at the courthouse. The reason I do, do you know how many people come back to me when they need it? I, and, and I would do the same thing. I can't find my power of attorney. Right. I can go get a certified copy. I'm good to go. And so, again, with the power of attorney, we're going to be able to move liquid assets. And, and with the transfer on death deed, I, and, and uh, I'm going to be able to protect the house. And I can do that even if mom or dad's sitting in a nursing home. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you want, you want uh, again, if you've got real estate, I'd probably think about that transfer on death deed, number one. And I would think about the power of attorney. And not much more than that after that. Obviously, you want a will just because it catches everything 
you know, that is left over, you may not think about. And that power of attorney is going to be different than the executor uh, uh, once um, you, they pass. Can you make them the same? Many okay. times I make them the same just because it's going to be a natural carryover because the power of attorney stops when the person dies. Okay. And then it goes, the executor can step right back in and, and, and finish up, you know, the, the estate. Okay. So, um, yeah, I would, I would have... You know, when I say 21, because now we're starting to mature a little bit, we're starting to gain a little bit of assets, you know, and, and that's why you should do it. I mean, I had a couple yesterday that I met with. The fellow's 70, the wife is 65. They kept saying, we meant to do this. And we just kept putting it off. You don't want to put it off and all of a sudden somebody has a stroke. Uh, I had a case one time where mom and dad sitting in front of me and we're talking about all this. And they said, let us think about it. That weekend, dad goes home, has a stroke. Now, if you don't have the power of attorney, now you got to go through the court system to get a guardian conservatorship. That's going to delay you maybe three or four months. That's going to cost you money because you're paying the nursing home maybe thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 per month. And you got attorney's fees. You're delayed. you got to get the court, court's qualification to transfer everything. Power of attorney is so simple, and it's very inexpensive you're probably looking between 200 400 dollars maybe 500 dollars for a document and you're done you get a power of attorney it's so typically a power of attorney if you're a married couple there's a power of attorney each other yes yes and mike on on top of that what i put a provision in there too is because you don't want the spouse you know go through a divorce so as soon as that action's filed, this terminates the power of attorney. Okay, you, you, great. You yeah. know, so we're catching that too. And I never thought about that. You always think about things over the years. And I had a lady come in. She goes, what if we start a divorce? <laughs> I want a paragraph in there. Right. So I put it in there now. You, you know, and just to cover your base, you probably want to have two witnesses for your power of attorney. And here's why. You know, these are experiences you learn by. I had a case where uh, mom was in mineral County. Son went down to Florida to take care of her transactions down there. Guess what? Florida requires two witnesses. Thank God mom was still competent. He came back. We did redid the power of attorney. We have two witnesses. You, you catch what I'm saying? So, you know, you, you should have two witnesses. Can you be one of the witnesses? The, the attorney? I'd rather not. You know, I'd rather them have somebody. I might not be around when they you know, need to use it. So I say, you need somebody you trust. Uh, and if there's a question, you bring the family together, you write up a family agreement, this is what we're gonna do, here's how we're gonna protect that. Because when um, you know, mom or dad gets sick, all of a sudden children start grabbing, you know, so you want something you know, in place as, as far as the family agreement goes. Yeah. Attorney Danny Staggers, our guest here on the program. Go ahead, John. Um, let, uh, I'm single. Uh -huh. And I've I've got a brother yes. who is also single, and that that's it for the family. Yes. Should we get a power of attorney for each other? Yes. Okay. And and here's why, John. And, and again, I'm single. <laughs> yeah. You know, and and so not only you got to have somebody step in. If you're in a hospital, who's going to take care of your financial affairs? Who's going to make your medical decisions for you? Mm -hmm. So you want that power of attorney to you know be in place, and. You think, well, I just have a brother and he's not married, doesn't have children. What if your charitable, you know, thoughts? I want this to go to a certain charitable, you know, entity. For me, I've my dad has a scholarship at Potomac State College. That's where I want my donation most of my assets to go. You know, he gave me a lot during my lifetime. Yeah. And and I want to make sure that there's something carried over there. Too. The only the only asset I have is my home. Yeah. I think the same is true with him. He he may have some stocks and bonds. Uh Let's say one of us dies like a minute from now. Mm -hmm. Do those assets automatically transfer, or do we need that power of attorney to make sure? Well, if he passes, that's why I need the will. Just to, yeah. because as soon as you die, uh, the power of attorney stops, and that's why, okay. Yeah, that's why I said you need the will. Just Got to it. Catch, okay. Just to catch any little thing that might. It, not. In other words, it. I, I would need to put it in my will that, yes. that he would get it. Yes. Uh, we have to. Yeah. It yes. wouldn't be automatic. Would not be automatic. Okay. All right. You know. Then you go through intestate succession and that. that you know. The it's a lot of rigmarole. It is. And it's, <laughs> going create, it's going to create a headache for you. Make it smooth as possible. Okay. And and you know again, Rob, we've talked about this and prepay your funeral expenses. <laughs> 
<laughs> get it done. It makes it easier on okay. the family you leave behind. Now, Rob laughs at me because when I, I've already prepaid my funeral expense. And I, told <laughs> I, the, I didn't laugh at you for that. No, that the point you laughed at me about was I told the funeral director, anybody comes in and cries, throw them out. Oh. oh, I can't do that. <laughs> I, said, I said, for goodness sakes, why are they here crying now? They could have been with me during my lifetime, and we could have been laughing and joking and enjoying ourselves and having good memories. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Well, that's the reason the Irish have a wake. And so everybody just has a good Drinks time. and has a great time. I agree. Now, I'm part Irish, too. I just well, wanted, I to <laughs> I wanted to make it clear to our sponsors, the Brown Funeral Homes and Cremations, that I would never laugh at someone who wanted to prepay their funeral homes, as you can do that at the Brown Funeral Homes and Cremations. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 and they're great people. They're really good to work They with. are wonderful people at yes. Brown Funeral Homes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the other thing I want to bring up, too, is, is um, you know, uh, uh, what we call the living will. That's, and and it's, it's, it's increased now to advanced directive. Basically, you're in the hospital. You're going. You're in a vegetative state. You don't want extraordinary major use. You don't want to be put on a ventilator. You don't want feeding tubes, you know, so forth like that. And and when you get that, um, you want to give it to your physician or your hospital. And by law in West Virginia, they have to. Your medical providers are supposed to ask you if you have a living will. I mean, I don't know if you've encountered that. I had a client yesterday. They said their doctor's older. He doesn't do it. And I said, eh. They're violating the law because they're supposed to ask. Mm -hmm. And the reason I want you to give it to your physician or medical provider is because I don't know if you all have uh, gone outside the system and you had to go to another doctor or a medical provider. It's on the, it, they have your information. I had to get down to Duke University for a procedure, and um, they had all my medical records. <laughs> it's right there. But, it, you know, it's supposed to be protected, privacy, and so forth like that. So that means if you're in Florida, the doctors can go online and see if you have a living will. And, and so, yeah, uh, I'll just give you a little background on that. Uh, the Karen Ann Quinlan case, that was in oh, the 1970s. Yeah. Uh, her, she overdosed, and her parents wanted to pull the plug. Doctors said, no, we have the Hippocratic Oath. It went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Supreme Court said, yes, parents have that authority. When it got back down and, and all that was resolved, every state passed a living well statute. Mm -hmm. Guess which state was the first one to pass the living well statute? West Virginia, which is kind of a neat plug, you know, for, for, for West Virginia. Mm -hmm. and, and so, again, uh, now they have advanced directives. You can put in, yeah, I want a feeding tube or, yes, I want medications, you know, just to make it easier on me. So I always say, do the advanced directive. You know, and and in West Virginia is really good too, um, in the sense that um, we do have a register out in Morgan in Morgantown. But again, if you give it to your medical provider, they're going to have it. It's going to be in the system. How much of the law you deal with, Danny, is federally directed, and how much is state directed as a percentage? And, and and that's really interesting, uh, Rob, because it's federal law, but the states can vary a little bit. You, you know what I'm saying? So, for example, it's like West Virginia, your limit is 2,000. Uh, you got to get your assets below 2,000. Maryland is 2,500, okay? Virginia says that if you're in a nursing home after six months, uh, they can um, go after the house. Uh, they've never done it, but it's in there because it violates federal law. And, and um, g g give you another one, um, which is helpful too, because a lot of, I have a case in Kaiser right now where uh, nice people, great people, they own it, Rob, they own an Italian restaurant, and it's wonderful. Nice. What's it called? I'm it's willing to plug Cas it. Castillas. Castillas. Yep. In, in Kaiser. In Kaiser. But what, uh, dad's in a nursing home, and they're trying, the DHE char is trying to look at mom's, uh, mom's assets. Under federal law, once dad's qualified, mom can win the lottery, you know, because, they, they want, you know, okay, we're going to get dad qualified, but they don't want to bankrupt mom. And and so uh, I guess it was in the 90s. Uh, John, you probably know this better than me, but in the 90s, uh, they said, no, we, we're not going to bankrupt what they call the community spouse. And so she has to have, and I always say she, because we men are the weaker sex, uh, she has to have a certain amount of income, certain amount of resources. But once dad's qualified, 
they don't look at, at mom's assets. Because that was another issue that was, you know, that you deal with and, and was brought up, you know. So, um, again, uh, these are things, please talk to, you know, somebody that deals with this. I'm going to brag a little bit because I'm the only West Virginia attorney that goes to the national seminars. I just feel it's so important. I fell into this probably 20, 25 years ago. I just think it's important, you know, uh, for people to know this. Well, what, Danny, what's the difference between what you do and, and what I hear are those uh, national syndicated ads for online sites that you can print out a legal form and take care of this for a minimal amount of money? I, and, and, and it's always... It's always scary. I always say, yes, I don't want to I don't want to get people coming to an attorney. But the scary part is, do they know you? Do they know the personal aspects of you? Um, and and um, so many times they have provisions in there that don't even uh, pertain to you and could create problems for you. You know, we've I, I always said there's a, um, there's a, a, somebody gave me a, a term. They said legal zoom to legal doom. Uh, they've done something <laughs> now, now mom and dad can't, dad passes. Now mom can't, you know, transfer assets, mm -hmm. you know, that can't, uh, protect herself and protect her children. Now, next question for you is, uh, somebody meets with you in your office in Martinsburg and then they get everything taken care of. Three years later, they move to Kansas. Mm -hmm. Does the document still hold or do they need to revisit that? And, and, and what I always tell people is, uh, at least, um, go to an attorney and in, in, in Kansas just to review it with you. But most of the time they're going to carry over, you know, and, and if somebody starts telling you, oh, we've got to do this all over, I might say, let me, let me walk away and get a second opinion. Because uh, so many times if, if, if you've got a good will, good power of attorney, it's going to carry across state lines. Uh, again, you know, several states will have a little bit of difference. Give you an example, like in Virginia, uh, testator, that's, or testatrix, that's the person that has created the will. They have to sign it twice in Virginia. They have to sign it right above the witness uh, lines. Why? I don't know. But you know what I do now? I have it done twice just because I found out that was a, um, an extra uh, thing that, that is uh, required in Virginia. Anytime I hear something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add it to my documents mm -hmm. uh, just to cover myself. Do you have licenses in any other states besides West Virginia Day? I do. I do. I was crazy. <laughs> I, took, <laughs> I took the D.C. bar and Maryland bar and took the CPA exam. And by that time, I said, I'm done. <laughs> um, you know, I should have taken the Virginia bar. But the one uh, kicker for me in Virginia is when you go take the, um, you go take the Virginia bar, you got to wear a suit. They, they say that's the way you're going to practice. You've got to wear a suit. A guy was telling me that uh, he was taking the Virginia bar. The proctor came over, told him to get out because he didn't have a tie on. He had to leave to go to the gift store to buy a tie to put it on before he could finish the Virginia bar. Seems like a silly rule. <laughs> yes. I know. I don't make the rules. <laughs> I don't make the rules. Danny, how do uh, folks get in touch with you about the things we discussed today and other items? Yes. Uh, Again, Daniel Staggers, I'm at 133 East John Street, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Phone number is 304-267-3915. Email address staggersmartinsburg at gmail.com. And I just want to add one other thing sure. is, um, you know, if, if you think you're starting to decline and we start want to start moving assets, remember I told you five years you can't get. You can sign a contract with your children that way we can start moving the assets out of your name because it's not gifting, but it has to be in writing because West Virginia, Maryland has the same law, is if children do something for parents, it's considered a gift out of love and affection unless it's in writing. So you have to write this contract up. So, you know, there's so, so many things we can do to help, you know, protect assets. Danny, thanks for coming in. Thank you. <laughs> and remember, the toilet seat at uh, the schoolhouse hotel is heated. Is heated. The schoolhouse hotel. Schoolhouse hotel. hotel. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate that information. <laughs> when I visit there, I'm only going in the winter. Yes. <laughs>